We are now learning, we are in past, way past the beginning of the Mimer, which the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe said in 1927, when he was given the news that he was going to be freed from exile. And he received this news in his city of exile, in Kostroma. And it says that the Rebbe <coughs> gave thanks to God, same way that King David gave thanks to God. Hashem libo Ani God is with me among my helpers, and I will see the destruction of my enemies. That's what King David said. <coughs> King David said it, what, 2,500 years earlier, something like that. But King David knew what he was saying. And the Rebbe said, maybe he is, but I don't know what he's saying. He must have been in tending something much deeper because what does it mean that King David who is the ultimate Jew said that I have a, I had a lot of helpers that helped me King David had a lot of enemies I have a lot of helpers and God was one of them God was among my helpers the Rebbe said well, the, the whole essence of what a Jew is is to show the world how God is one how God creates everything and everything has meaning and everything has purpose <clears throat> and to activate the Jewish people to make the world better and to serve the one God and now King David is saying that I had a lot of helpers and God was one of them what do you mean maybe we should serve the helpers what's, what's going on how could King David say something like that and it's printed in the Psalms it's part of the Torah and the second part is also not understand. What is it? What is it not understood? What does it mean? The King David said, "And I will see the destruction of my enemies." That sounds like he's asking for, for, vengeance, vengeance revenge. And it's a known thing that the essence of what Judaism is, is to transform the world, not to destroy. People that don't believe in God, is to teach them, to show them, not to punish them or to torture them. Well, then he says, that "I'm going to see the." Uh, could be could be yes could be could be action. yes but it, here but it doesn't seem say, I'll see Michelle. from the simple meaning of the sentence I'll I'll show you right I'll show you you're gonna you're gonna see what does it mean you're gonna see it's not going to, you're going to see the light. You're going to see that you're wrong. You're going to see means you're going to get it. I'm going to show, I will see the downfall of my enemies. Right? That's the simple meaning of the sentence. Yeah, but it depends on the inflection you add to it. If he would say, if King David would be saying, and my enemies should see the light. May my enemies also come to serve God. May my enemies see my righteousness. May, may I, my enemies realize they're wrong. He doesn't say that. Right, the implication is that I will see er -eh, I will see the downfall. So he's, say, he's saying it as a prophecy. Uh, in a way. That's what I think. In a way, yeah, a prophecy, right? A prophecy in a, in a I want to say a certainty, like we say now, right? The Iranians have bombs. The United Nations is totally against us, right? They all don't care about us. They or they want to destroy us. Yeah, well, that's but in the one second. But in the end, God will show them all. What does it mean? God will show them all. It means that God will show them all. It means that they'll all suffer. Right? The, the Rambam is true. The Rambam and others say that eventually all the non-Jews will see that God is really creating them. That's the God of the Jews. And they'll all come to serve the God of Israel, the creator of the universe. Right? And what does it mean they'll come to serve the creator of the universe? They'll drop all the religions. They'll just be good people. There won't be any more religions. <clears throat> drop all the, so what does it mean? It doesn't mean that they'll all become Jews. They're, they're all going to be just like us. They're all going to give us, right. Yeah. Our, King David, it's not fitting at first glance for King David. I mean, the, not only that, and the Rebbe points out, a lot of his enemies were really, you know, Torah and Mitzvah's people. These were like really seriously accomplished Jews, religious Jews. Yeah. And great in the Torah, great in the Mitzvah's. They trusted God. They believed in and they really believed that what they were doing is right. They truly believed that what they were doing is right. 
they were, let's say, searching for the truth. And because of that, they opposed King David. They really believed that for some reason that King David was a usurper or that King David wasn't a good king anymore or that King David wasn't allow the, allowing them to express themselves, right? That they, they had also their ideas, something like Korach. <coughs> you know, he also had his ideas. So here Korach is a good example. We see that King David, that, that uh, Korach opposed Moshe and the ground swallowed him up with all the people and there came fire from heaven and there was a big plague and... That seems to be, that's what King David is saying. Right? Moshe, went with Korach, he said, God, you know, take care of these people. You know, do what you want. You do what you want. He said, if, there's, if, it's, if these people die in a normal way, but if it, there's some sort of weird creation, some, the, the, then that shows that, uh, that I'm right. right. But he left it up to God. Here, King David is mostly saying that, you know, it's going to happen. I'm going to see it. I'm going to see revenge. Right. These people also were. Yeah. These people also were for sure. If you, you, King David is the king. Okay. So King David. Then we're going to see what's going on over here. We're going to see what's going on now. King David also was a very interesting case because the Rambam says that King David was the Messiah. It says he was the first Messiah, and the second Messiah will be Mashiach Ben David. That's what the Rambam says. In the end, it's a law. It's not, it's, he, didn't, he didn't write it in you know, one of his letters, the Rambam, or you know, the, even more in the you know, the guide to the perplexed. He wrote it as a law that King David was the first Messiah, and the second Messiah is going to do ju- like King David. Now you brought up just as a little side thing, which I, I, I don't really understand. I keep on hitting that there's Moshiach, jo- that Joseph, son of Joseph, God. Right, there is such a thing. There is such a thing as Mashiach ben Yosef, but there's a lot of uh, opinions what that is. And it's not, if you want to call it a halachic term, it's not a halachic term. Some people say there's the ben Ishchai, he says that's the same person, <coughs> he's going to die and he's going to come back. Some, some people say that it's just a preparation for the coming of the Mashiach, it's going to be, he's going he's to also die in war, in battle. That he's going to come from the tribe of Yosef, because there was a split in the Jewish in Judaism after the King Solomon, so the kingdom split into two parts. Two parts. The bottom part was was uh, Yehuda, that was King David. And the top part was all the other tribes, all the other ten tribes. <coughs> so, but it's not a halachic term. We pray. We pray. Or at Semach David Abdullah. There's there are Jews and people that they make a big deal out of this and be, you know, Mashiach ben Yosef, Mashiach ben Yosef, Mashiach ben Yosef. We have to, Mashiach ben this person is Mashiach ben Yosef, and this person. But I mean, okay, it could be that all of them are right. Are right. But it's not a, a. There is going to be such a thing. Maybe there already was such a thing. Who knows what it was? But it's not Allah. We pray at at Semach David Abdullah. Mashiach ben David. We're praying for. The Rambam says David was the first Mashiach, the second Mashiach is going to come from David. <coughs> and so what is this term of Mashiach ben Yosef? I don't know. They, 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 some people say it's also an allegorical thing. They say the previous Rebbe, whose name was Yosef, he was Mashiach ben Yosef. And the, the Rebbe, who, he comes from the tribe of David. The problem is the previous Rebbe also came from the tribe of, of uh, King David. They're both directly related to the Maharal Miprag, who's directly related to uh, King David. So, well, certainly we have a tradition that the Mashiach is going to come from the family of David. Yeah, for sure. That's no doubt about it. There's no doubt about it. No doubt about it. Listen, what, again, now is the time really to talk about Mashiach, but we're not, this, the class is not, uh, this class particularly not, but just in general, wh- what is the idea of Mashiach? Three minutes on Mashiach, especially because Gimel Tammuz, the Rebbe, said that the whole purpose of the Jewish people is just to bring Mashiach. The whole purpose, look in the Torah, look in the Rambam, the whole purpose is to bring, why? What's, what's uh, Mashiach? What's the big deal? Mashiach is going to come. The idea is like this. God creates the world, it says in the Bible, God creates the world from his speech. It doesn't say he creates it according to the Kabbalah, God creates it from light. According to Midrash, he creates it from his names. 
There's also gematrias and powers and spirit and things like that. But no, in the Torah, it says that God created the world from his speech. He spoke. Why does it say speech? Because speech is made of letters. Remember we learned in the previous mimer? Remember we learned? But the main thing is that speech has meaning. So God creates the world. Everything that's in the world is created from God's speech because everything in the world has a meaning. What is this meaning to it? What does it mean? It's a godly meaning. It's a godly meaning. And little bits, sometimes you can perceive this godly meaning. When, when do you perceive it? For instance, love. A person loves his parents. A, ch- a parent loves his children. Right? Good friends have love for each other. A husband and a wife love. You see something unique, something eternal in the other person. Right? It's a, that's love. Another example is consciousness, conscience, person conscience. Defiance, a person defies the world. There's Professor Viktor Frankl talks a lot about this, he, but he talks about it in normal terms. He doesn't talk about it in God. And, uh, but still, nevertheless, those are little bits of the divine that put meaning into everything that there is in the world. And people can work with things that everything becomes meaningful. A person has a job, all of his customers can become meaningful to him. He wants to to provide their needs. He wants to do the best that he can for them. In other words, he's thinking about the other person. The door to meaning opens outward. So things like that, like love, honesty, uh, happiness, joy, these are things that come from, as a result of, the meaning that's found in the world. When you see something that's really valuable, right, then there's love. When you see a cause that's really important, then you have courage. And these things are eternal things that are put into the world. These are little hints of the meaning that there is in the world that's above understanding. And therefore a person, let's say even in the last minute of his life, if he accepts you know, the, the, his situation with bravery, with courage, those seconds are eternal. Right? There's whole books that are written about people who just act of bravery. One act of bravery. Then one act of bravery, he jumped into 9-11 in the towers and he pulled somebody out. This is a brave man. How long did it take him to do that? A half an hour, an hour or something. Some people, five minutes, they jumped in and they think that an act of bravery, an act of courage, an act of honesty. These are little glimpses of eternity that are in this world. Well, Mashiach is going to come and show that really the source of all this meaning is coming from the Torah. The source of all this love is coming through the Torah. The Torah is what is, as you say, articulating this infinite love of God to come into the world. How this is going to be, because the Torah is the blueprint for the creation of the world. Because we'll see that the Torah is not just a book, it's not just the book of the Jews and a, a religious book. We're going to see that the Torah is really something that has infinite, infinite meaning and that puts infinite meaning into everything in the world. And that's what Mashiach is going to do. Mashiach is going to make a whole, reveal a whole new dimension of meaning and love and courage and, and, and uh, 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 harmony and beauty, conscience, things that, 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 that people weren't aware of. Only maybe piecemeal, a little bit. And that's going to cause world health. It's going to go. So that's why Mashiach is so very important and why it's so important that the Mashiach be somebody that keeps the whole entire Torah. Right? The Torah is the main thing. Okay, let's go further. Good morning. Good morning.